Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number of substrings containing all three characters. The idea is that we could be given a input string that only contains either A, B, or C. Like these are the character set. And so maybe we're given a string that looks something like this. What we want to do is count all of the substrings that have like the A character and the B character and the C character. Now they could have multiple copies of those, they just need to have at least one occurrence of each. So you could think of it like this. This has at least one occurrence. This has at least one occurrence. This has at least one occurrence. So already, if you're thinking about the problem logically, it seems like having some way to count the occurrences of each character. In this case, we could probably do that with an array if we really want to, or you could just stick with the hash map. I think that's what I'm gonna do just because it makes it a little bit easier. We don't really have to think about the array indexing and stuff like that. Hash maps kind of abstract that away from us via like the uh, hash function. So I like to keep things simple, but you know, feel free to use an array if you want to make your solution marginally faster. But the fact that we only have three characters that are gonna be thrown in the hash map, it probably doesn't make a difference. Now, thinking of substrings, there's gonna be roughly n square substrings. I'll kind of go through the visual for you as I've kind of done in many times. So we want all the substrings starting at this character. So like that, or like this, and just kind of keep going. We could do this with nested loops. And so after we do that, we wanna do the same thing with the next character. So something like that, and we could keep going. Obviously the drawing is gonna get pretty massive if I do the entire thing but I encourage you to draw things out yourself if you don't quite understand what I'm talking about. So obviously there's a very trivial brute force n squared solution, but how do we go about optimizing that? Because this is a medium problem. That's the hint that probably this solution is not going to be sufficient. But in a real interview, even with a question like this, you might still wanna think, is there a better solution? Because we know the brute force is so easy to code up, it's worth thinking about the better solution. Sometimes coding up the brute force can actually help you arrive at the optimal solution. I think that would be the case for this problem. So let's think about this a little bit. First of all, the fact that we want to count the substrings, we're gonna need some kind of shortcut because we can't literally look at every single substring. So let's see, is there some kind of way if we could count all the substrings starting at this character? And we could do that either in constant time or like amortized constant time, meaning if we had done that for every single one of these characters, the average would have been like a uh, constant time. And if we're doing that for each character, then the total time complexity would be something like a linear time solution. And there is a way. So that actually makes things easier for us. If that did not work, the next thing I would have tried is maybe there's a way we can count the substrings ending at each character and maybe that'll help us out. But that's actually not needed in this problem. Now, how do I know all of these things? Quite frankly, it's because I've done a lot of practicing. And when I am practicing these problems, I'm paying attention to these minor details. I'm not just trying to learn the solution. I'm also trying to build problem solving skills. I'm trying to understand why does a solution work? How could I have figured that out by myself? And things of that nature. Now, another thing is the fact that we're dealing with substrings, my intuition tells me the first thing I should do is try the sliding window problem or the sliding window pattern rather. Can I somehow find a solution that fits in this pattern? that will help us solve this problem because I know that the sliding window pattern typically runs in linear time. Now, if you're not familiar with this pattern, you probably wouldn't immediately recognize that. That's why I created Neatcode.io and you can probably check that out if you wanna learn like the patterns of leak code and stuff like that. This is also covered in I think one of the courses. But anyways, now I'm thinking along the lines of that pattern, I'm thinking, okay, starting from here, what am I gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna keep expanding my window because the main thing I'm looking for is at least one occurrence of A, B, and C. So I'm probably gonna use a hash map to count the characters in my window currently. So I'm gonna expand, I have one A. Okay, now I have one B. I'm gonna keep expanding. Okay, now I have a C, that's good. So in my hash map, I'm not gonna draw it all out, but I'm gonna be keeping track of the counts. So now I'm here. Now I want some kind of shortcut. We found one window starting at this character, but it's kind of easy to recognize how many windows we're gonna have starting at this character now. You might be able to figure it out. It's practically a math problem. Well, not really a math problem, but it's just gonna require a little bit of arithmetic. It's gonna depend on the size of the string and it's gonna depend on our current boundary over here. Let's say I call this the left pointer and I call this the right pointer. How many additional substrings can I create 
other than just this one over here, well, just tell me how many characters are to the right of this right pointer. Because I know if this window was valid, of course, this window is going to be valid. I'm not removing anything. I'm just adding more characters. And then, of course, this window is going to be valid. Again, didn't remove anything. And of course, this window is going to be valid as well. So, OK, that was pretty nice. Now, if I do have my result, I'm going to say, OK, add one for this window and then take like this distance which is three in this case, and add that as well. So our result is gonna be four. Now, just to tell you how I'm actually gonna code that up, this is how I'm gonna code it up. We know this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say my right pointer is over here. This is index five. We know that the length of this thing is six. That would bring me over here. Obviously, six is out of bounds, but that doesn't really matter to us because watch the math over here. I take the six, I subtract two from it, that gives me this distance, which seems like it's incorrect, but I mean, you could just take this and kind of shift it uh, to the left by one, and then you have this distance, which gives us four, which says, okay, there's a substring ending here, 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 and here. So the math works out. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the length of the string, subtract it from the right pointer. Okay, so far so good, but now what? We didn't have to go through the entire thing to figure out how many substrings there were starting from here. But now, how do we figure out how many substrings are starting from B? Well, let's just shrink our window until our current window is no longer valid. So right now, we only have to do one thing. We only have to uh, shift the left pointer by one because then we will end up over here and then we will have removed the A and then we'll see that the length of the hash map is only two. So we don't have all three characters in there. So, okay, now we can continue to expand. Now there was one thing that this example actually misses and that's what I'm gonna cover in just a second but just to kind of show you the rest of this. So now we increase the window. Okay, great, we found the valid window. We take this distance, it's three, we would add it to the result and now we would keep shifting the window until it's no longer valid. Once again, just removing one character would be enough and then we would have ended up uh, over here and then we'd kind of just kind of rinse and repeat that. There's one thing that this didn't uh, catch for us because Every time we shift the window just by one, then the window becomes invalid. But what would have happened if the window was still valid? So let me just kind of change the example just slightly. And this is one of those things at this point, if you've made it this far and you understand everything that I've talked about, you have to ask yourself, why are you still watching the video? You'll probably learn more by doing the rest of this on pen and paper by yourself, or at the very least, try to figure out if you can code up the solution to this problem or how close you can get without my help or without looking at a solution. Uh, but anyways, I'll continue. I'll have a double A's now and then maybe double B's and then maybe a C and then I don't know, I'm just throwing some random things out there. Okay, so now if I were doing this, I would be expanding my window starting from here. I wanna know how many substrings starting from this character. So I start to expand one, Two. So, so far we only have A's. We're looking for A, B, and C. So I, I keep expanding. Now I have some B's, but I just need a C. And then finally, I get that C. I'm not going to like go through everything, but I have two A's. I have two B's now, and I have a single C. So once again, I could take like this distance and say, okay, I have a substring ending here, 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 and here if I'm starting from here. So I have four substrings. Okay, now I want to shift the window. So I shift the left pointer. Now this is my window. And so what I could do now is keep shifting the window until it's no longer valid. And right now it is still valid. I still have an A. So then I could shift it one more time and then I'd be over here. Okay, that's great. Now I'm going to start expanding from here because I want to count how many substrings starting from here we have that contain A, B, and C. But do you see the issue? I forgot to count how many substrings starting from here there were. I did count this, I did count this, but I kind of skipped that. So what we do is as we are shifting, okay, I shifted my left pointer, but this window is still valid. So, okay, now before I shift the left pointer one more time, I'm gonna ask the question, what's the distance from here to there? Because now I know that any substring starting from here can end here as well. It can end here as well. It can end here and here as well. So once again, I'll just take that same distance and add it again. So my result now, uh, I'll, I guess I'll continue with the dry run of this. This gave me four. This window will also give me four. So my result at this point will be eight. 
So just to finish this up, I'm going to shift uh, the pointer one more time, and then it's going to be here. This window is not valid, so now I'm going to start expanding. I'm going to add the A over here. Now this window is valid. Now I get this distance. It's 3. I add it to my result. My result is going to be 11 now. And now I'm going to shift the left pointer from here. I'm going to get this window. This window is still valid, so once again I take that distance. It's 3. I'm going to get 14 now. And then I shift the pointer one more time. Now I get to this window. It is not valid, so now I'm going to be expanding. I expand once. I find a valid window. Length is 3. Uh, we don't really care about the length, I guess, of that window. We just care about this distance, which is 1, 2. I add that to the result. My result is now 16. So now once again, I'm going to shift the window until it's no longer valid. Kind of running out of space now, but uh, if we remove that, this will be our window. I have A, B. It's not valid. Now I start expanding from the right. I get the C, and now th that's just a single window. So my final result, I believe, will be 17 for this example. You can see the way we coded this up, the right pointer will go through the entire array. The left pointer will go through the entire array. Even though the code is going to have nested loops, uh, overall time complexity is still going to be linear. Space complexity is going to be constant. Even though we have a hash map, it's going to be max size of 3, so that's fine. Okay, so now to code this up, and I'm basically just using like the sliding window pattern. If you've watched any of those videos or if you're comfortable with the sliding window, this will probably look pretty familiar to you. I'll have my left pointer, I'll have my result, I'll have my count. I'm going to make it a hash map um, so that we don't have to worry about like a key doesn't exist error or anything like that. If you're not familiar with the default dictionaries and you want to learn like these Python tips and tricks, you can check out my Python for Coding Interviews course on Neatcode. It has a bunch of interactive lessons. Uh, but to continue, now we're going to have the for loop. That's where I'm going to declare the right variable. Then I'm going to just go through the entire string. And for every character that we see, I'm going to take that character, the character at index R, increment the count of it in our hash map. And then what I could do is have like an if statement here and say if the length of the count is equal to 3, well, then I'm going to do something. But we know that every time the count is equal to three, not only do we want to shift the left pointer, but also we want to take like that calculation I was talking about and then add it to the result. So I'm actually going to make this a loop. I'm going to say while this is true, then first of all, let's add to the result the number of windows. So I'm going to add to the result the length of the input subtracted by the right pointer. And this is for reasons I talked about in the drawing explanation. There are multiple ways to calculate this, um, but I'm just doing it this way. We want to take the character at the left pointer and decrement the count of it. So that's what I'm going to do, so, uh, character at left pointer, and then decrement it. I also want to increment the left pointer by shifting it. There's a very specific reason I put this line after this one. I hope that you can figure out why I did that, because we want to take the character that was at the left pointer and increment the count of that. We don't want to increment the left pointer first, then we would have a different character potentially. Now there's one other thing. Since we're relying on the length of this hash map, anytime a count reaches zero, then we should do this. So if count of character at the left pointer is equal to zero, then count dot pop the character at the left pointer. So this is correct, but do you see the issue? Did I put it in the right position? Because once again, I'm accessing the character at the left pointer. I don't want the new character. I want the original character, the one that we decremented the count of. So what I should do is move this over here. I actually made that mistake when I was coding this up. So that's why I'm mentioning it. Um, but anyway, so now at the end, just return the result and we should be good. And you can see here it works. It's pretty efficient. Maybe if we use an array, we could make it slightly better. I'll actually just try that just for fun. So I'll put a zero here, multiply it by three. I'll get the ASCII value of that character, subtract the ASCII value, lowercase a. So I'm just going to kind of put that in every spot now. So over here, I'll change that to the left character. And over here, change that to the left character. And over here change that to the left character. And now I recognize that the insertions, like the incrementing is fine, but we don't actually need to pop. So I could probably actually just get rid of this. You can see that I wasn't really thinking this one through as I'm coding it up. You can see what my real thought process is like when I'm problem solving. So this we can probably also change to just count of zero and count of one and count of two. 
hopefully this is correct off the top of my head. It looks fine. Let's give it a run. Yep, and you can see that after running that, it does make things a little bit more efficient, but I don't think our previous one was that bad either. Anyways, if you find this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.